Hello everyone, this is the third video on Steam Board Timeouts tutorial series. In this video, I'll show you how to use internal trigger. This one doesn't use output compare nor input capture, it just uses the counter to trigger an event. So I can program the prescaler and counter so that the period will be, com will be elapsed every half a second and this will trigger an event. And I'll use this to blink an LED in my case, but you can use anything you want. And I'm simply just going to show you how to do this on Cubamix. If you want to do it without Cubamix, I'll, I'll guide you through it at the end of the video, but it's very straightforward. All you've got to do is to start up with the uh, similar setup to the previous video on timers, the input capture, but you don't do any of the input capture settings. And you've got to start it with a different function. You'll see now in Cubamix, I'll uh, highlight a few things. Okay, so let's start with the Cubamix then. Okay, first click on your project. And select the right board, Steam 30 or 407 in this case. Uh, we don't need to enable any pins for this mode of timer. All we need to do is to enable the timer itself. I'm going to use timer 2 for instance. Clock source, internal clock. Now it's enabled. Uh, I'm also going to enable one of my LEDs, the green one. And that's it. Let's go to the configuration and do a few settings for the timer. So click on timer 2. And I need to set a prescaler, uh, let's say 16,000. So this will bring the clock down to 1 kilohertz. I'll set the period to 1,000. So the period will complete a full cycle uh, after one second, because 1,000 micro, 1,000 milliseconds is equal to one second. Um, and I've got to set this one to update because uh, to keep it continuously. And I need to enable timer to global interrupt. That's everything I need to do. Click OK and ready to generate the code. I'll give a project a name, I'm going to call it TIMTRG. I'll store it at this location and I need to select the right ID MDKR V5 and click OK. Uh, and once the source code is generated, click on Open Project and this will take you to Carl Microvision IDE. And on Carl Microvision, we need to expand this folder and open the main. Uh, and you see, you can see Cubamix written all the local functions for us. Uh, and all I've got to do here is I need to start the timer as interrupt. It's called starting the base timer using a function called hull tim base start. And I need to start it as interrupt to start dash it. Um, and this takes one parameter, the uh, tim handle type diff, and it's called htim2 defined by uh, Cubamix here at the, at the top. So this will start the timer as interrupt, but I need to uh, redefine the callback function and implement my own code. Uh, and we need to use the uh, period elapsed callback function. And you can find a template of this when you go to functions tab, um, timer. Uh, it's called period elapsed callback. So it's the period elapsed callback. Uh, I need to redefine it in my main, but without the weak object. And now I can add my code. And what I want to do simply is that I want to toggle my LED, the green one. So, hold GPIO, toggle pin. It's on port D and it's pin 12. And so this will trigger my LED whenever the timer period completed a full cycle. Now we're ready to compile the code and upload it to the board. So, compile. Okay, completed uh, compiling without any errors and warnings. Now I'm ready to load it to the board. Now let's have a look at the board and watch the LED. Okay, awesome. So you, you saw the LED blink in every second uh, whenever the timer period is elapsed. And we make the timer even faster by reducing the period counter or by reducing the prescaler. Because now the prescaler making the tick, every tick is one millisecond and I had a thousand tick. I can make a hundred tick and it's going to become faster and faster. But I'll leave that for you to experiment with. Uh, as I said, if you want to do this without Cubamix, you can follow the uh, my my previous video on timers, input capture, and do the same setup exactly, except you don't have to implement the input capture uh, initialization thing. So you just do the basic timer initialization up to here, and you need to set the output trigger to TRR go update. That's everything. And this brings me to the end of my tutorial today. If you found it helpful and want to see more videos like this in future, then don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you later.